Thank you. Wow. It's to just take these moments and drink you all in. Hi. <laughs> it's wonderful also to be at the beginning of this gathering with you all. Nicholas has asked me to speak that spontaneous transition can also happen. Well, I was tuning to the energy vortex that is there and it's so interesting what is beginning to be built at that property where you all are. And as you know, every one of you that comes, you are adding vibrationally to this vortex, to this field. And that collective vibration is then going out through our world. Today, we wanted to share a few different things from the past and the future. Many of you know that I had been meditating for probably 20 odd years when I magnetized, you could say, into a very say because not everyone's going to tune to that network. And the reason people don't tune or they do tune is what we call our light body load up. So we want to talk about your body of light, having your body of light. And we want to talk about the things you've loaded up in your body of light, pre-embodiment. This is information that the inner plane network that I've been working with has been offering at the beginning of this year in particular. In 1993, as you know, I underwent this 21-day initiation that many people have done since then. And it was overshadowed, you could say, by a very particular person or being, light being, called Serapis Bay. I don't know how much you know of the Ascended Master Network, but these beautiful beings, they were working with people like Madame Blavatsky, who founded the Theosophical Society a long time ago. They were part of the Trans-Himalayan Brotherhood. There was Saint Germain, a, a being called Sananda, Serapis Bay, Elmoira, and others. And you could say that the prayers in people's hearts got to a point where they became quite noisy. I don't know about you, but... I remember my mother talking about all the starving children in the world when I was young, and I couldn't fathom that because I come from a unified realm, as many of you do, especially the younger ones that are here, that are being drawn to the reality. We come from a different zone, you could say, where the people are the number one priority. Yet on planet Earth, it has been like that. We've had weapons of war, of trade, pharmaceuticals, 
the sex trade and everything else has been more of a priority, the money-making game. But millions and millions of people all around our world have been praying, been asking, been saying, what is this about? Why aren't our resources distributed in a more equal way? Why aren't all the people in our world taken care of? And what's amazing with prayer is quantum benevolence. When my system first converted into this way of being, I didn't understand much about it at all. I just went through this 21 days sacred initiation and I was frequency matched enough to get this particular gift of freedom. But I didn't understand the science of it at all. It's taken many years of continually connecting in my own meditation and the living of this and talking to these beautiful beings to understand more about it. And one of the things I've understood is my favorite topic, and that is quantum benevolence. There is this energy and it is so loving and it is so wise and it is so pure and it's everywhere it's in us it's around us and it's this energy that has been responding to people's heartfelt prayers and so you could say that this quantum benevolence downloaded to West, the West, our group, particularly in the West, a potential solution that would change consciousness in our world because it would allow us to come back to our true nature. It would allow us to come into a state of oneness with that energy that breathes us and gives us life. And a byproduct of that is that not only were we emotionally being fed differently, we were mentally being fed differently, and we were physically being fed differently. So this was the beginning of all this came through by these from these beautiful beings of light that many people connect with telepathically in their meditations. And so we were almost like being a gift, being given a gift, a gift that answers prayers, a gift that will change consciousness, a gift that makes people compassionate, and a gift that makes people feel so complete that we're not in the taking, taking, taking of the me game. We come into the we game. So the whole pranic living reality is about, to me, the elimination of all human hunger so that then we are free. And it's so interesting for me because The last 25 years, I think it's 25 years for me now, 26 years, every, as the time has gone by, I've understood all the different levels that we hold within us, many of them, that allow this to be possible. For example, our light body. And this is something these beautiful beings have been talking about more and more. I realized on my 57th birthday, I shared a little about this with some of you. I was sitting in this same room. This is my meditation room where I'm talking to you. And we have this beautiful picture behind me, which is an incredible matrix 
sun, yellow, gold, and matrix. And it's quite an intricate pattern, just like our bodies of light are so unique and so intricate. So I was in this room five years or so ago on my 57th birthday, and I came in to the most special state that we can all trigger, and that was a heart state of absolute gratitude and appreciation. When I scanned my life, there was nothing I wanted to change and everything to just say thank you, thank you, thank you. I feel so blessed. And when we go into the energy of real heart appreciation and gratitude, the Heart Math Institute has proven that we come into a heart coherence. And when we stop focusing on matter and we focus on energy, we end up with a brainwave coherence. So we have then a matching of a heart and brain coherence and then the fields shift around us new zones you could say open like pranic living it's a frequency match to the zone of the truth of who we really are so on that day I frequency matched and and I was given the revelation of all levels of our body of light and we want to touch on some of these in our sharing today firstly for me many meditators have felt i went into this state that i call a state of boundless beingness where you realize that just one tiny speck of that which we are is in this form. But we are way, way, way beyond that. In fact, we are everywhere. We are multidimensional, vast beingness. After I was in that revelation, I went into a state that I could call the template of communion. And that's this pulsation of wisdom that is everywhere in everyone. But we need silent stillness because this state we have come into in consciousness in our world is about self-mastery and self-responsibility and never giving your power away. Like you'd never come to this breatharian table and go, oh, Nicholas is more special than me, or Erica, or Ella Tom, or Jazz, or anyone. No one's more special. Everyone is so precious and so unique, and nobody is more... There's no one to give power away to. The power is in us and this wisdom is in us and this love and this knowing of what is right for us is in us. So there's this beautiful vibrational state that I call the hall of or the template of communion. Then we have what I call the template of perfected health. And it's a vibrational state within us. And you can literally command every cell, every atom, every molecule of your body to rearrange itself back into this template of perfected health. Will the body listen? If it feels loved. If this whole biosystem temple feels that the master is awake within it, if it feels as if it's loved and treasured, of course molecular structure will listen. 
we know with pranic living, we need to invite the cells of our body to feed themselves in whatever way attains and maintains perfect health. So we can say, hey, body, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. And as the essence being I am within you, I invite you, feed yourself direct from source, from prana, from essence. If you want, it's possible, we know this, or and feed yourself from physical food or both. Whatever works for you. I'm not controlling, I'm not rushing, I'm just allowing body intelligence to do what you've always been able to do. You choose, you're intelligent. So whatever way you need to feed so that this physical structure can be in perfect health, do it. And let it happen in the right way, in the right time. This is what we call the self-talk and coding into the system. So we have this template of perfect health that I really could feel so strongly that day. Then I started to see and feel like the blossoming of a flower. It's like a fast forward movie where you see a flower blossom in seconds. That's the body of light. It has these zones that are just like, and this, what I saw was what I call our self sustaining, self regenerating template. And we frequency match with this. We're not going to get it from doing process, although, of course, they can be wonderful. You know what? No matter what you're called to do, if your heart calls you to do something, it's great for you. But you, we need to understand everything is about a frequency match. So it's how we spend our time, how we live our day-to-day -day lives, what we give our energy to. So silent stillness meditation for me is so precious. Being absolutely present as presence in every moment is so precious because then you can hear what you need to hear. So for me that day, here is the body of light and it's just going, releasing its different zones. So I know Many people know that there are levels within levels of our light body. We have this zone we can frequency match into in our body of light that is pure creativity. It's that space you click into where you suddenly are doing automatic writing or you hear the most beautiful music that you as a musician may channel through, or art that you can see that you bring to canvas. They're the sort of things that when people see or hear them or watch or um, feel them, they're just like, oh, it feeds their very soul. They, it's just so beautiful. And the zone of creativity, pure creativity, is where we get insight to any challenges we have. Because when our body goes completely pranic, it can be challenging. Less so for people today than it was 26 years ago, of course, because consciousness has changed in our world. We have also in our body of light, this zone, that's my favorite, and that is the zone of true Tantra. And when we lock in, when we frequency match, there is this pulsation that flows through us that I call the zone of the true beloved. 
And it's the sort of love every human being's always wanted. It's the real soulmate. It's the real twin flame. It's the Christed love. And when it is strong, when it really rises and floods through you, it's impossible to be hungry. Absolutely impossible to be hungry. You have no hunger physically. You have no hunger mentally. You have no hunger emotionally. You have no hunger spiritually because you are completely in the vibration of the most nourishing energy that is available to us in form. There are other levels in our light body. For example, this year, we experienced in dark room, and I love dark room. We don't have our dark rooms to initiate people into pranic living because only you can do that. How you spend your time is what aligns you to this channel of this pure, pure love that takes away hunger. But in our dark room, we experiment with things like what happens when you take 45, it's only small, different people from different countries and different spiritual traditions and we live together with no light, absolute darkness for nine days and nights. No physical food, but we live a very particular lifestyle with chi and drops us back to core, drops us back to pure nature, allows us to come into that merge day with pure nature. Well, one of the things that happens is that the zones of infinite possibility begin to present themselves because you've got 45 odd people, 45 people who are in brain and heart coherence we're not focused on matter because we can't see anything. We're focused on energy. So this year, when our group were in deep meditation, we had three different groups, we were revealed another level of our body of light. And this I call the universal harmonic. If you could imagine you're in deep meditation. You're in expanded state of awareness. You've bilocated to the center of the universe. You've opened to sense the energy that is vibrating through the white hole, the core of the universe. What's there? What is there is five frequencies, five powerful frequencies that are now flooding our earth. They are coming in so fast and so strong. The first one, healing energy, a green ray of the most powerful healing energy so those that need healing on earth are being bombarded. They're drinking from this flow. The next, pure, pure love, this blue red love, the purest, true, beloved love. The next, this golden energy that is carrying so much wisdom, all the key codes for a new creation on earth of harmonious coexistence so that we can first be in unity in ourselves and then live in harmonious unity with each other. The next energy is red, this beautiful red energy that's coming from the universal core that is carrying the power 
that comes with love and wisdom when they unite. Now, the red energy is about will and it's about courage and it's about strength and it's about discipline. The next flow coming through from this universal core that our group were just like, whoa, is this beautiful violet light energy of high alchemy, of absolute transformation. What a combination of frequencies. Five powerful frequencies coming from the very core of our universe, flowing through our system, flowing through the whole universe. And what it is doing as it hits our system, it is activating what I as what we know is a zone in your body of light called the universal harmonic. So anyone who is in their heart of hearts ready to live in deeper levels of unity or peace or harmony and just, you know, just get along, you know, like enjoy this beautiful planet where we're just finding that there's a vibration now rising within us of a universal harmonic. And it's like the more we drop back to pure nature, the more we flood our complete system with what's at our core, that's when we're free. That's when we feel so much love. That's where we feel so much peace. That's where our eyes are all shiny, shiny, and our emanations are nourishing. And many of you know this. So in our dark room this year, these beings of light that are coming in more and more, we can see see them around us, we can sense them around us, they're coming from the unified realms. And they said, and this is important, we want to share with you, they began to talk about light body loading, pre-embodiment. For example, before I took physical form, I loaded up the energy matrix of my body of light with different key codes of information and energy that would be triggered, blossomed at a certain stage in my life. I needed to spend 20 years with an Eastern guru. I needed to meditate on the core, the true nature of who I am. I needed to be a single mother. I needed to raise my children, which is tough. That's a big initiation, being a single mom. I needed to gain persistence. I needed to gain patience. I needed to, to be able to stay in a pure place of constant peace, no matter what was happening, because I had loaded up my light body to be triggered and to have triggered this self-sustaining template and that it would be done in 1993 so that we could bring this into the West so that movement that you are now part of could grow. What did you load up in your body of light as a gift for planet Earth before you took embodiment? And this is important because only you can activate the zones you carry or the templates you carry in your body of light. And you do that by how you spend your time. No one can do that for you, although we can inspire each other, of course. You know, I've had 26 years of research in this field, so I've played, I've done many, many different experiments in this, apart from the educational programs we've been working with in the world, so people could understand a little bit more. But one of the things is, did you agree, pre-embodiment, that you would also demonstrate this ability that every human being has. 
did you agree pre environment that you would step into this, that you would frequency match with the pure nature you carry so that it could be strong enough within you to take away all your hungers so you could be free this life. And what does freedom mean? It's not just whether you take physical food or not. It's about you being at one with an infinite and constant source of love and wisdom. So there is no personality self anymore. There is no ego self anymore. There is no higher self. There is no lower self. You are just in this beautiful merged state where you are truly free and you are living a life of constant grace and gratitude. But you see, what you loaded up your body with may be very different. For example, I know many of you have met Christiana who is there with you every year. And Christiana has made very interesting commitments to support this movement in different ways. Nicholas, he preloaded his light body to offer certain things, to hold this space in this land in Italy so that people could come all around the world and hear from so many different people who you see are very unique. Every festival that anyone ever holds about pranic living, at the end of it, people say, wow, all the speakers were so different. Everybody's energy and what they had to share was so different. And that goes back to what we preloaded in our body of light. For example, I preloaded in my body of light that I would connect with beings from the unified realms. So we are working in my network a lot now with different beings of light who are stepping into our world as we expand our consciousness to on earth, they live Hello. Hello. It's possible to repeat. Yes. Where did we get up to before we lost each other? Nothing in the <laughs> The whole thing is consciousness. We were talking about different people's loading up of their bodies of light before embodiment. So one of the things I also loaded up in my body of light is my connection working with beings from the unified realms. Now, you will have met and I've met people who are nourished by prana who aren't interested in such connections. They're not interested in the redistribution of resources so we can as a planet live in a more healthy harmonious unified state you meet people in the network and they're only interested in the mind over matter reality for this freedom everyone is so different so 
How can you test? Let's use this one. Simple kinesiology. Take your thumb and your finger and make a circuit. Take your other hand and thread through like this and make a statement. And if that statement is true for you, you won't be able to break the circuit even though you try. So you could say, this life, I will demonstrate being nourished physically purely by prana. This life, I will demonstrate being nourished physically purely by prana. Now, when I say that and I try and break the circuit, I can't because this was part of my light body loading before I took embodiment. This life, I am working with beings from the unified realms. That's a truth for me. So here is a very, very basic, simple kinesiology technique that you can use to determine what you loaded up into your body of light before you took embodiment. What gift did you agree to give this earth, this life? What gift is Mother Earth giving you this life? What gift are your family and friends giving you? Children often teach us more patience. The gifts are always virtues. And I see people all around our world and they want certain gifts. They want certain abilities, but they still need to develop a few virtues. So some people, it's a little more humility. Some people it's a little more patience. In the pranic network I find sometimes people are impatient. They say I've done the 21 day process or I did Jasmine's dark room or I did Akai and Camilla's process or whatever. There's so many different things to choose from as you will hear in the gathering but I still haven't locked in. And maybe the virtue being required here is just patience. But why do we have to push our bodies anyway? These energies that are coming in from the universal core and also through the galactic core, they are changing the whole physiology of everybody's system. Everybody's crown chakra is doing like the painting behind me, just drinking all this beautiful energy, just flowing in, flowing through the crown, flowing into the pineal gland, flowing into the pituitary gland. And the pineal gland is producing DMT. And that is harmonizing left, right, brain hemispheres. And the energy coming in is making people's bodies change. How many of you here, if you do take physical food, sometimes you feel that straight away your body is bloating? Have you felt that? How many of you have felt that? And that's your body just saying, I'm done with that vibration. I don't need it anymore. So we wanted to take tonight just to talk a little bit about the uniqueness of your own body of light. What else is in there? What are the zones? Yes, I've had about eight different levels 
revealed to me experientially that I've now come to understand. But there's so many more zones there. What did you preload yourself with? How do you release it all? Obviously, if it's preloaded, everything will be released in the perfect way and the perfect time anyway. So we can just relax, just be present, just be so in each moment because that's when our true nature is dominant. And when we are so in each pure, true, every little moment when we're so present, again, it's virtually impossible to feel hungry. So we wanted to share a little bit about this tonight because our planet is being bombarded by the most amazing frequencies that are facilitating great change. And many of you, who are at this gathering now, you have come from the unified realms to send a very particular vibrational frequency, not just to let it flow through you, but to then allow it to just naturally flow through our world so that all of us become very nourishing in our presence as we are nourished in turn by this beautiful energy that is at our core. So, enough of me talking. Is there anyone here who would like to ask anything? You have so many beautiful, beautiful days ahead of you. Sunshine, summertime, so many people to meet. So let's just take this time and go into a little meditation. Or have we someone with a question? Not yet? Okay. Hi. Hi, Christiana. I can't hear you, darling. <laughs> Thank you. So so, so. Yeah. So he wa better. he wanted to ask about something that you talked about before. In italiano <laughs> è una curiosità <laughs> che ci chiediamo spesso. It's a curiosity that we often have. Yeah. Yeah. Se i nostri, ehm, lo dico, se i nostri amici alieni ci potranno ehm, aiutare. If our alien friends can help us. E tu lo stai già facendo benissimo. You are already doing it perfectly, but per sapere se è quella la domanda che ho fatto. If our alien friends can help us in the times to come if there's hardship to come. This is his yeah. question. Mm. Okay. <laughs> We are <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. What's the greatest gift we can give
Hey. Okay. It's possible uh, to repeat the, the, the so answer? The first, yeah. So the first energy that Mother Nature is releasing from her very core is harmony. The next energy she's releasing from her core is compassion. So here we have energy coming through the universal core, energy coming through the galactic core, energy coming from Gaia's heart, energy coming from our heart saying we're ready to live in harmony, we're ready to really live in unity within ourselves and on earth, guess what that's going to bring? Chaos. Chaos, chaos, chaos. <laughs> because any human being, any system, political system, any economic system, any educational system, any system that is out of harmony is being bombarded from the core of our world and from the higher realms with the frequency of compassion and harmony. So if anything's in disharmony, then it's going to be slammed by these energies and re-vibrated into harmony. And it can be a little uncomfortable. It's like if we push our bodies too hard too soon and then they're not ready to be nourished completely by prana or we're not socially ready or we're not emotionally ready, then it can create chaos in our lives, especially with family and friends and even in our body. So our world is being bombarded from different um, beings of the, well, not even different beings, there's a merging happening. If you can imagine making a cake and the cake is called harmony, well, the bowl is our planet. You have seven and a half billion people with different agendas and different movies of reality. Then you have flooding up through the bowl all that harmony and compassion from Gaia Gaia's compassion because she loves her creation, that's us. We couldn't have a body. We couldn't exist without the elements of Mother Nature. Then you have all the other ingredients flowing in as we are changing consciousness. And right now and for the next little period, it may seem as it's all being mixed together that it's like, ah, a bit yucky, it's, no, it's a bit lumpy, it's not smooth yet, it's not integrated. But you know the formula for a smooth integration? Come back to true nature. Come back to your core. Come back to the moment, a breath. We have been healed with the most amazing mechanisms of fine-tuning this system into a completely different reality zone. The first, the breath. Right now, as you breathe, are you breathing in oxygen or more? Right now, when I breathe, I'm breathing pure love. I'm breathing pure essence. I'm breathing pure prana. I'm breathing from the very core of creation. Here, intention when we breathe. So we have the beautiful breath, which means when we change the breath, we can state change and move into a completely different zone of reality. We have will. How many people apply their will wisely? For example, are people all over our world interested 
in being nourished purely by prana? No. Not yet. Nope. <laughs> they still love. They love the flavor. You're in Italy. Everyone loves the pizza and the pasta and the wine and the food and the flavor. People in our world are like, wow, I couldn't imagine not taking physical food. But others who are pre-encoded to do this are going, oh, yes, I'm interested. So they have will, the will to understand more about who we really are, that we're not just personality, that we are beautiful, vast, multi dimensional beings inhabiting form. So we have breath, we have will, we have coding, we have intention, we have words to speak words of power, like, I am pure love. But we drop quickly back to pure nature. You claim it. Pure nature is love, eternal, and it. So we just cultivate its energy to be the strongest within us by claiming. So we have breath, we have will, we have intention, we have words of power. We have the ability just to be. We have the ability to expand our awareness, to have a statement of I am infinite. I am eternal. Now this this is your way out of chaos. No light beings are going to wave a magic wand and go, ah, stabilize the world quickly. Because people must want to come into that zone. But every one of us can change the channel. Every one of us can state change. Every one of us can change our frequency. So the next gift we have is time. How we spend our time determines our frequency. And it determines what zone of reality we lock into. To lock into this freedom from all human hungers, change the dial. We just move from duality to oneness. And we do this by how we choose to spend our time. So here we have these simple keys that are inbuilt in this magnificent human design that everyone can utilize to play with consciousness. Now, if you like chaos, and you want to live in chaos and you like adrenaline and you like the high and the low and the up and the down and conspiracy theory and the us and the them and the ah, you can play in that zone as long as you want. And then one day you might go, click, click, been there, done that, boring. What else is there? Well, then it's like, Fine tune, there's a new channel. And pranic living is just a state of consciousness of living in a different zone by choice. And then it doesn't matter all this and the shifts and the chaos and the change as every single system on earth begins to operate in a way that is for the highest good of all. Did you say yes to that? And that's the next thing. Here is a huge power you have. And that's the power to say yes. 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 I'm ready. Make this truth. Lock it in. Quantum benevolence. 
this is what makes my heart sing. This is what I say yes to. I say yes to being in the deepest levels of unity consciousness within myself. I say yes to being a free system. I say yes to living in harmony on earth. I say yes to being anchored into the permanent the, the most permanent, purest flows of peace. I say yes to essence, to essence, communication, so that all my sharing with all beings is for their highest good and my highest good. Are you saying yes? 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 What's that going to do? What's it going to do? This infinite quantum benevolence that's everywhere, constantly listening to us, and we get into our heart, and we get clear, and we say, yes, I'm ready. Yes, I'm ready to experience all these zones in my body of light. Yes, I am ready to come into a state of, of harmonious union with Gaia. Yes, I am ready to walk in harmony upon her. Make it truth. What is the right way for you? And so the yes is so powerful. It doesn't matter that duality is doing what duality does. It doesn't matter chaos. The power lies with us and what we say yes to and what we choose to cultivate, and what we give our time to. But how can we say yes if we don't know what's available? I didn't know 30 years ago that this was available to me. I didn't know that my system had within it the most amazing matrix that was part of the body of light that when it was strong enough could take away all my hunger. And many people don't know that, but many of you have experienced this in your own way as I have. And so other people get to know us and they know this is a possibility because you walk before them as a living example. So what do you say yes to? Can you say yes? I'm ready to express my highest potential. Yes? Yes? <laughs> okay. All right. Is there anything anyone else wants to ask? Hi. Hi. Hello. More energy. You. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Good. How are you? Um, there's a question. Uh, Hello. Hi. Hello. A question from Veronica from the French team, and she's wondering if you can speak a little bit more about the five rays that you mentioned earlier. About the five rays? Yes. Yeah, the, the five rays? The five, the five, the five. The five rays from the universal core? Yes, precisely. Yes. Yeah. You know, Al, when we do gather in darkroom, the way our group brings things through is very interesting. And what we were being shown was part of a light body structure. Have a look at your hands. Have a look at your hand chakras. 
Okay, I'm an artist. I have big hands. <laughs> I paint. You can't see it with your physical eyes, but in your hand chakras, you actually have five stars of David. Now, the Star of David is the triangles merged. So you've seen it, the six-pointed star. This is actually part of our body of light. And everyone has in their hand chakras these beautiful stars. You have five of them. The ones coming in on the universal core are actually in the middle of the white hole that is there. And as you know, a white hole is an, as an entry point through, it's like a dimensional door or what you would call a chakra. So we have our major chakras, as you know, and we have our minor chakras, and every human being has these healing hands. And like Erica, she, she's good at doing all this and there are other healers among you, but everybody has this ability to channel energy through their hands. So you have these Merkaba, what we call the Merkaba, stars of David, not just in your light body hands, but you also have it in your light body heart. So right here in your heart chakra, you also have these stars of David and they match up with what is at the universal core. So when we were guided, when we went into an expanded, bilocated state into the universal core, what was so beautiful was the energy that came out through that white hole, which were what I'd come to term cosmic plasma beings. These are beings of such pure consciousness that they don't have physical form. They vibrate too high. They can't keep molecular structure around them. They're just in a very beautiful flow of consciousness that is almost formless but still individualized. So when they came out from the universal core, the first thing they did was show us what was in the light body hands. So just as we have it there, we also have it here. And they also showed us that we carry them in our heart chakra as well. We have more than the five. You can look at this in your own meditation and ask to see more of the construct of your body of light. And while there are more in also in the universal core, what they were showing us is that we are drawing through from our heart chakra and from the hands, we are calling this energy in. We have decided on Earth. It's our planet. We've decided we're ready for a different game. We're ready to live in deeper levels of harmony and unity. So as we decide that, as we come into this more we game, not the me game, instead of it being about me, 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 and everything about me, it's about the greater good, the we game. When we come into that heart space of compassion and gratitude and love and appreciation and looking for the good in everyone, like I know there are still people in the pranic network and they judge and they talk badly about others and, you know, that's just reflecting who they are right now because they're not understanding yet that every person's pattern of energy is so perfect. And that's part of unity consciousness. None greater, and none lesser. Everyone is unique and everyone is bringing beautiful gifts and receiving beautiful gifts and has a part to play. So as we come more into the we game, that too activates the layers in the body of light, but particularly these five frequencies. So what do some people need on earth? Healing. 
the biggest healing people need is this idea of fragmentation, this idea that we are human beings trying to be spiritual or that all we are is a mind, emotion and body because we are so much more than that. We are so much more. So green healing energy bombarding our world so that everybody who needs that energy can drink from it and come back into a state of wholeness and balance. The next energy, love. What really brings true healing if not pure love? And this is a divine love. This is the true beloved love. This is a love that is benevolent and kind and compassionate. It's not the way we have romantic love or human love. This is a pure divine love. So this blue energy of the purest love, of the true beloved, is really because as more people come back to pure nature, as more people come into a state of union with that which breathes us all, then the more that love rises and floods through us and attracts more love. So this second energy from the universal core is the purest love because all healing happens with pure, pure love. Then we have the wisdom. So this golden energy coming in, and it's also coming directly through our sun, is key codes of knowledge or the key codes of wisdom all the sacred geometric patterns for a new time, a new beginning. Because we've never been on earth where we are now. This is a brand new time in our evolution. We have come into a collective state of higher consciousness where we can bring through the formula to bring our highest dreams into manifestation. And the energy coming in is also unlocking the key codes of knowledge that we hold in our body of light. So it's a two-way magnetic attractive pattern. The next is that beautiful energy of will and power. And a lot of people are needing this now. They need the courage. How many people on earth are really following the call of their hearts? And how much courage does that take? I remember when my system converted to being nourished by prana and I talked to people about it. They didn't like it. It made them angry. So I stopped talking about it and it took the beings of light manifesting in my bedroom to push me onto the global stage for me to get the courage to step forward because I felt that matrix of support. But many people would love to create a different life, to really follow the call of their heart, but they're not quite there yet. So this red energy coming in, it's the energy of will, it's the energy of discipline, and it's the energy of true power to create amazing change. We've called it into being. This isn't coming because light beings have taken pity of us. It's coming in direct response to the call from our heart. Then the next energy we have, so green and the blue, and the gold, and the red, and the last one is pure alchemy, violet light. And one of the most beautiful beings who was behind the release of the 21-day process that many of you are familiar with is Saint Germain. His energy and energy of the violet energy 
is just about freedom. So when we have healing, when that healing comes from love, when we have wisdom and power, then we are transformed. And all of these are energies we carry within that we can just frequently match into. They're all part of our body of light. So these beautiful universal beings are just coming to the awakening ones. What have you said yes to? What we say yes to, what we really say yes to in our heart of hearts sets up a magnetic attractive pattern so we move vibrationally into another level in the matrix of creation. What are you saying yes to? That's what it comes back to now. So is that enough sharing about the energy of the universal core? It's just energy that is igniting, feeding, fertilizing. See it as fertilization, fertilizing a garden. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else anyone would like to ask before we maybe meditate? Yes, come on up and talk into the mic. <laughs> So, Hello. So, Hi. So. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. Do I want to drop down so I can see you? I can see your shorts. <laughs> Hi. Okay. Um, I'd like to to know if this process of twenty one days of fasting or if it's uh, appropriate for people who are very athletic mm. speaking about myself I swim in the sea all year round I run on the beach and uh, Should I, like, you know, consider it with cautious? Because should I take it with much cautious because I'm athletic? Or it's good for yeah. everybody, whether they are, you know, athletic or they are quiet. Thank you. Thank you. Um, one of the beautiful things about this gathering is you have many people who are being nourished by prana who are physically with you. These last few years I've been Skyping in. I'm in Australia right now, as you know, and we're in our winter. You're in your summer. and But here you have and you will see and meet Erica, Many of you know Erica Whitturn. She's now in her 80s. She's probably in the audience somewhere there. And if you spend time with Erica, you will notice that even though she's in her 80s now, she's acts about she's about 17. She can dance all night and she's got endless energy and she's a wonderful example of somebody who is getting more energized and more youthful as far as energy goes as time goes by. And we say to people that you have to see prana as the most supreme petrol that there is for your physical body car. You have junk food, and if you have junk food, 
uh, the car doesn't run as well, the body doesn't like it, and you have all sorts of food which you can see as fuel. You have raw food, which for a lot of young people, their bodies love raw food especially those who have come in from the unified realms. And what I mean by that is that they have strong experience of living life in a unified state in a different system through different timelines. So we have people around the world experimenting by listening to what their body is calling for them. Many people have stopped taking alcohol now. Many people have stopped taking red meat. Many people have let go of white meat. Many people are vegetarian. From there, many people now are vegan. From there, many people have gone to raw food. They tell me in Italy that the fastest growing um, food sources now are vegan restaurants, vegetarian restaurants, because consciousness is changing and people are listening to what their body wants. So you have these levels of fuel. Then you have prana. Now prana is what I call cosmic microfuel. Best fuel ever. It can't be genetically modified. There's no pesticides, there's no insecticides, it's totally organic. And because it's the best fuel ever, you get stronger. You get more energized. Before I was being nourished by prana, I would do an hour of yoga. Now I can easily do three hours of yoga, like many of you here, I'm older now I'm in my 60s now and I don't get weaker I get stronger I don't feel like Erica I don't feel like I'm getting older I feel strong good vital life force so I ride my bike I walk on the beach I swim I do yoga I dance and I've got far more energy than I ever had when I was going through the regular digestive process even though I used to have good physical fuel, mainly raw food. But you need to experiment. Just know here that you are fueling up your body with the best fuel ever if the voltage is strong enough. So let's talk about this. I meet many people who are wanting to convert their bodies but they're not deep enough in the channel. So it's like, I described this last time, it's like you could take a white shirt or an off-white shirt and I can put it in a bowl with purple, a purple dye or colouring agent. If I just put one sleeve in, it's not going to change the whole system. I actually have to drop the whole shirt into the purple dye and infuse the whole shirt so it can be transformed. So you need to make sure that you are deep enough in the energy that can feed you consistently. So it's dropping back into that pure source of energy you carry within you and you do that by identifying more with your true nature and less with your human personality self. It's like two baths. Like you can come to a pranic festival here and you can hear about it all and it sounds great and you leave and you go back to normal life and you don't change how you spend your time. Well, here is the pranic bath and it's filled with source energy, pure prana. Well, some people get in and they're standing up to their knees. That's not enough. You've got to lie down. You've all you, you've just got to drop into this pranic ocean to such a degree, to such an intensity that it's just flowing right through you and feeding you consistently with its pure fuel. And some people might experience that in a meditation. 
you might do a meditation here or just you might be sitting in the sun and, and you're just locked in and your whole body's vibrating and you're so nourished. But then you leave and you go back into the normal bath. And that may be the human personality self bath. And you just spend your time doing other stuff that makes the human personality self stronger. But there's no way. When your human personality self is the dominant frequency in you, there's no way you can be safely nourished by prana and let go of all physical food. The mathematics, the science, it doesn't work. It's about immersion, deeper immersion, pure infusion with that which feeds you. So we often say to people, we eat all the time from the best source of nourishment ever. We eat constantly, 24 hours a day, but we eat differently. And if that's one thing I'd like you to remember is don't have this idea that we don't eat. We eat all the time, but differently. So I've got these waves of energy. We all do this ocean of energy that's just pulsating flowing through us all the time that when you live a certain way you can feel it and you feel it as love and you feel it as this beautiful peaceful vibration and that's what's feeding you so prana as we've often said it's like wind that flows through a tunnel but the tunnel is a cell and the cells have these little filaments. And as this pranic energy flows through, they feed. So we feed differently. So you won't get weaker. You'll get stronger. You'll have more energy. You'll feel more vital. You'll be more, yeah, just it'll, it's just wonderful. But you just got to make sure that your immersion your infusion of that energy is strong enough. And when it's strong enough, then your weight stabilizes, you don't need as much sleep, you're super energized, you have great mental clarity. And it's really great because you don't need the digestive system anymore. You know, your all that energy you use for digestion just goes for higher capabilities. It's a freedom. So stronger, not weaker. <laughs> Is there anything anyone else would like to ask? Yeah? Okay, so how about we do a little meditation together, okay? So just get your body comfortable. And close your eyes. And begin to slow your breathing rhythm right down. And just as you inhale, just open to draw to you so much more than oxygen. If you go out later and you look at the sun and squint your eyes, nearly close them, you will see millions of pinpoints of light. That's prana. It's everywhere. 
And so just deep, slow breaths drawing to you this pure, vibrant, pranic energy with each slow inhale. your mind wanders, bring it back. Slow breath, nourishing breath. You can also sense Mother Nature around you in that beautiful area where you all are gathered. And with each slow breath, you draw pure Mother Nature chi to you to flood your system with this chi with each breath. Totally aware of that beautiful Mother Nature energy, all those trees that are converting carbon into oxygen. So here you are in a high chi field, mountains, trees, Mother Nature. This is what you breathe. And when you breathe out, breathing out the purest love and appreciation, the Mother Nature energy for her elements, the body she has given you, Expand your awareness Sense those beautiful Qigong masters in China 6,000 years ago they went into this state of Bigu being nourished by Mother Nature's Qi And the more they drank of Mother Nature's chi, the more energized they became until they lost their physical hunger. Just sensing these ones in the field. Your consciousness elastic. Expanded now to connect with all the Qigong masters in the world who also use Mother Nature Qi to feed themselves.
And as we breathe in the Mother Nature Chi with an awareness of these ones, we give back, breathe out gratitude for their research and their understanding of how Chi can feed us. The breath so slow, drinking of Mother Nature's chi with each inhale, giving our body pure fuel, lunch, chi. Your mind wanders, perhaps it likes to be the boss, but it's rest time for the mind now. Bring it back to the breath. We expand away. And us again, expand to recognize the yogis of India who also were nourished by prana, their term for the unified field of essence or source. Just sensing, meditating now with us millions of yogis two huge populations of Chinese Qigong practitioners yogis in India all knowing how to play with Qi to be nourished by source. Tuning now with each slow breath to the yogic network. And as we breathe, we drink not just chi prana, but all this wisdom that these ones also share of their journey with being nourished by source. We are all connected in the web of one and we open to this now in silence for a while. Each breath you take so nourishment, drinking of the purest pranic flows, flooding your system with each slow breath. We expand our awareness again and tuning to all those who live in the unified realms 
those advanced civilizations who've been where we are, who've ascended in consciousness, become one with their pure nature and are free. And so we recognize these ones. And with each breath, we drink now of those universal energies flowing from the highest dimensions through the universal core, drinking pure essence cosmic particles. So much to drink with each breath. Mother Nature Chi. Cosmic Chi. Essence. Sensing all of this flowing in through the breath. Filling lungs. Sense that your whole body is drinking this energy of essence, that it is flowing in through the pores of your skin as you breathe. What can you say yes to from your heart? Can you say, yes, I'm ready to experience my highest potential on earth in a way that nourishes all life? Can you say yes, yes, yes? Can you say, yes, I am ready to be source fed in the perfect way and time that is right for me, that fulfills all my pre-agreements before I took form? Can your heart say, yes? Yes, yes, I'm ready. Make it truth. Can your heart say, yes, I am ready to walk in harmony? Live in harmony with Gaia, the goddess being of planet Earth. Yes, yes, yes. Teach me how. Can you say, yes, I am ready to experience deeper and deeper levels of true unity consciousness within myself and with all sentient life through all realms? Can your heart say, yes, yes, yes?
What else can your heart say yes to? Just contemplate this in silence for a while. What are you really ready for? And just take these final moments to commune with your physical body intelligence. Invite it lovingly to feed itself in whatever way it needs, direct from source, prana, chi, or physical food, or both. Or either end result attaining maintaining perfect health on all levels. Use your words communing from your heart. And just placing your awareness in your heart chakra. Just seeing it as a dimensional door. Just sensing the purest flows of love flowing constantly from the highest realms within. Spiraling out through your heart chakra door and radiating out into the field, connecting you heart to heart with everyone at this gathering. And perhaps adding the intention that everyone you meet, everyone you connect with, all that you exchange, Words, energy, is for the highest good of all. And so that everything that is shared in this gathering elevates, enhances, energizes every being there in a way that is perfect for each one. And then sense the collective energy that you are building in this field that it too is radiating out through Italy and around the world. That which is for the highest good of all. So that all that you are there and do in the coming days is beneficial individually and collectively for our world.
And when you're ready, just open your eyes. Having a stretch. And I know that you'll enjoy these coming days and nights and meeting the perfect ones, listening to different ones' stories and sharing in this beautiful way. Namaste. And big, big thank you to Nicholas for all you're doing. Thank you, brother. Ciao.